I want to welcome uh, everybody on behalf of myself, Nicole, the Tucson Tug Leadership, and Michael. Michael's here representing the, uh, the Phoenix User Group. This is going to be an awesome event. I'm excited. We got some awesome presentations. We got some fun trivia, and hopefully we'll have at least an opportunity for some participation on, on the tail end if you, you desire. So a few, a few FAQs on the front end. This will be recorded. It will be shared. Um, the slide deck will be shared as well. And yes, we're going to be having fun, hopefully with all that's going on in the world, pandemics, um, fires, 110 degree heat. Um, yeah, this will be just sort of a couple hours of levity, of fun, uh, of community building to sort of forget a little bit, at least for a little while, all that's going on. So welcome. All right, so yes, all you guys are muted. There is a Q&A section. You can send questions for any of the presentations. Nicole is gonna be moderating those and asking the present presenters at the tail end of their presentation uh, a couple questions that get um, input into the Q&A section. Feel free throughout the meeting to enter any comments or uh, other questions or chat in the chat window. And it will be, as I mentioned, recorded and available on the Tableau YouTube channel. So by way of agenda, uh, 10 a.m. introductions, announcements. Uh, we got a great presentation from Gray Hunter from the University of Arizona Eller College, excited for that. Uh, we got some Tableau trivia that Michael's gonna, gonna lead us in. We're gonna have some fun there. Quick break, and then Lindsay's gonna kick things off with risk and rewards and a Project Health Viz presentation at 11 a.m. Michael, you wanna introduce the Phoenix crew? I do. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks again to our panelists. Uh, we're excited to be teaming up with the Tucson User Group. Uh, here we are in all our glory, the Phoenix Tableau User Group. Uh, we just celebrated our seven years of existence last month. Uh, so thanks to everyone for helping this uh, community grow and prosper. Uh, we have a strong leadership team, I think. Uh, we've got a lot of diversity uh, around different capabilities, uh, strengths, uh, and everything we do. We've got a couple Tableau ambassadors, myself and Ann Jackson, who's also a Tableau Zen master. Josh Jackson, Justin Hinkfoot, Jeff Park, Suraj Shah, and myself. I've been using Tableau since 2011. Um, pretty much from end to end, Tableau, desktop, server, um, the development side of things, do a lot of training, workshops, COEs. So like I said, we've got a pretty diverse leadership team. And if you have any questions uh, on how to engage with Tableau, use it maybe to its capacity, definitely reach out to us. We're gonna talk a lot about more later in this presentation, how to engage with us. So uh, Christian. Pass it over back to you. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, so we are in the process of working up to the level of organization that the Phoenix group has in place. So right now it's, it's me and Nicole sort of run, running the show. Um, Nicole, do you want to introduce yourself real briefly here? Sure. Um, so I've been in the Tableau user group for, well, we're new, I helped start it. Uh, so it's been about two years now. And I do data analysis for a local nonprofit, uh, primarily behavioral health, but some primary care as well. So I use Tableau to monitor performance um, at kind of all levels of the business. So kind of still, still growing with it. It's fun stuff though. Cool, thanks Nicole. So my name is Christian Felix. I work at Roche Tissue Diagnostics here in Tucson. Uh, I get to work with Tableau every day. I've been using Tableau since 2013. Um, got introduced to the tool. I was doing a master's in analytics program at Texas A&M, got the free student license, fell in love with the tool, and have been using it ever since. Um, yeah, as, as Michael and Nicole may have alluded to, this group is fairly new, so we're in the process of, of sort of building it up, expanding it, building the community here in Tucson. And really what I'd like to make you guys aware of, if, if anybody's interested in jumping on board and helping to build that, reach out to myself or Nicole. 
love to hear from you and love to, to team up with you to uh, continue to build the Tucson community. All right, so we got a lot of announcements. This looks like a long list. We're gonna move through it very quickly. Um, and then we're gonna get into the presentations. So first thing I wanted to mention uh, is a Project Health Viz review. So Lindsay is gonna be doing a presentation on Project Health Viz. And if you would like to share uh, a public viz that you've done in the past and haven't reviewed live by Lindsay, we're gonna be putting her on the spot uh, during this meeting and asking her to, um, to lend her skills to, to do a review of your viz. I don't know if any of you have seen the reviews that she writes up on her blog, but incredibly thorough, detailed, and helpful. So if you want to, you'll have the opportunity to, to do that here in this meeting. Um, just go ahead and put the URL in the chat window and she'll bring it up and just do a quick review at the end of the meeting. Secondly, uh, Viz of the Day. So Lindsay was awarded the uh, Viz of the Day yesterday for her Project Health Viz for June on the social capital uh, data, data set. Uh, she's gonna be talking, I believe, a little bit about that in her presentation. But if you haven't checked it out, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, bivariate chloropleth, so multi-dimensional look at the data within a county level US map and some really cool functionality with parameter actions that is really innovative and uh, just introduces some really cool functionality and usability to the Viz. So check that out. Excited to hear what Lindsay has to say um, about that in her presentation. Congrats, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Data Kids. So um, this is something that Tableau rolled out, I believe, a month or so ago and a great way, particularly during this season of staying at home, sort of kids away from school um, or doing school at home, to engage kids with data. Um, we started doing that. My older daughters have been deep in the Harry Potter series, just looking at, and Wings of Fire, a couple sets of books, looking at the characters in there, trying to produce some visuals based off of those books. Just a way to introduce them to data analysis at a young age. Um, sort of build the, the foundational data literacy, um, data fluency, um, sort of at the elementary grade level. So there's a link here. You can access it via the slide deck um, after the presentation to learn more. Tableau e-learning. So this is an awesome opportunity. I've, uh, I've promoted it at work for people who have been interested in, in learning more about Tableau. 90 days free. Um, and I believe the 90 days starts uh, as soon as you enroll and sign up for the e-learning courses. But I believe it expires June 30th. So if you haven't taken advantage of it already, in the next few days, go to it and you can take all these different courses based off of what swim lane you're basically trying to, to learn um, in the Tableau ecosystem. So uh, I, I mentioned the e-learning. I, I used some of those courses to prepare for the certified associate exam that I took last month. And um, there's still the 50% off discount that you can get for the Tableau desktop specialist exam. Um, all of these, no matter if you're a, a server or a desktop specialist, all of these are great options just to set yourself apart and to, to grow uh, your skill set. There is a, a certification discussion on Slack. You can join that by clicking through the link in this slide as well. So this was an initiative, if you haven't seen it, put out by one of the community members, Mark Connolly. Um, when people have reached out to me on LinkedIn or something, and I tell them I'm not looking, but uh, I'll tell you where you can find people who have this skill set, I point them to this. So this is a, a resource where individuals who, who may have been impacted by COVID-19 in terms of employment have been able to enter their name, their contact info, some of the, their certification and their skill background, and then have, have uh, employers go to it and see who may be looking for work. So an awesome community initiative uh, for the community, trying to, to help the community. So if, if that is you, if you have been impacted, and if you haven't entered your information in here, I encourage you to go ahead and do that. Michael? 
All right. Thank you. So as you can imagine, in-person events from Tableau have been postponed due to uh, recent events. However, we're still able to engage and prosper. And on the Tableau events uh, homepage on their website, you can find all the virtual uh, activities going on. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Fringe Festival, uh, there's a DataFam Community Jam, which is hosted by them, and Tableau, which is a monthly event, uh, has some great content from Tableau talent all around the world. Tableau just recently uh, had their virtual IT summit. Uh, this is available on demand, uh, so please check that out, watch that. Uh, goes through a lot of uh, technicalities of Tableau, um, how to drive forward through Blueprint and some other things. Uh, there's a section on how Tableau uses Tableau, which is uh, really great, especially in the enterprise space. And this month, uh, June 30th, is uh, Tableau Live. So Christian, if you go to the next slide, I'll talk to that. Tableau Live is not necessarily a replacement for Tableau Conference Europe, but uh, it is probably more a segue into what's to come, evolve uh, for future events like conference-like sessions. This is uh, hosted in Europe. Uh, it will be based on British uh, Standard Time. However, um, we've got a little matrix in there for you that are in Arizona and the US to kind of figure out where that is. These events will be recorded, so do not feel that you have to wake up at the crack of dawn or evening, depending on where you're at, to try to get a hold of and watch these things. However, uh, they will have live interactive sessions, much like if you're familiar with the conference where you can engage one-on-one -on -one with Tableau representatives for Tableau Doctor, Roundtables, uh, Data Village, and those things will be uh, conducted around 6 a.m. to 7.30 Mountain Standard Time, as well as 4 in the morning until 10 a.m. Those will not be recorded. If you're looking to take advantage, network with people, get some answers uh, solved, challenges solved, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the link to register is on the page. The slide deck will be shared with everyone in the community. And the video, again, will be posted online uh, later today. All right, so a new community is coming, a new platform. Uh, we've been waiting for something for many, many, many years. And now that uh, Salesforce and Tableau have combined forces, uh, you're gonna see something come up probably in the next week or so on the Tableau community. This is gonna be revamped, built on the Salesforce community cloud. You're gonna have a much, uh, engaged experience, new look and feel, enhanced capabilities, quicker access to content, recommendations, utilization, and other things, so much more stuff, gamification kind of features, strong integration between the user groups, events, and announcements. Um, so do take a look at that. If you haven't joined the Tableau community, the forums, the user groups, uh, those types of things, go ahead and create an account today. Uh, community.tableau.com, and at some point, uh, you'll see this new look and feel come up. It's going to be amazing. All right. Uh, another thing I'm excited about, hopefully you will be too, uh, if you're familiar with speaking at events or you know that events such as like the Tableau conference uh, has come up, Tableau usually sends out a call for speakers. Well, now this whole thing is open for everything, all virtual events. If you have something that you want to talk about, uh, you've got a, a talent or a niche that you think you can uh, speak to, go out to the uh, Speaker Bureau program and apply. Uh, again, the links and everything we'll share in the chat uh, throughout this meeting, but it'll be embedded into the slide deck here. Once you apply, you'll go through an application form. That application form will uh, collect some information from you. And if the Speaker Bureau uh, finds that your application has merited warrant and there's some value there, they'll reach out to you to see if you're available to speak at certain events, like an IT summit, government summit, a Tableau conference type event. This is good for a whole year. Um, 
So this deadline to apply will end on July 31st. Uh, so please do that. Establish yourself uh, as a, a leader, an expert in the Tableau community, and have some fun doing that. All right, the Tableau, Tableau Ambassador uh, Program. If you're not familiar with that, um, as I mentioned kind of at the start of this, uh, we've got uh, a couple, uh, actually a few Tableau Ambassadors in the Arizona area, uh, myself being one of those uh, for user groups. We've got a, a Forums Ambassador and a Tableau Public Ambassador uh, with Ann Jackson, who's also on the Phoenix user group. Ambassador program is recognizes uh, people within the Tableau community that uh, exemplify uh, engagement, um, expert knowledge within the, the, the product and the platform. Um, and there's six branches today. And we'll talk about a new one that just came up. Uh, back in 2015, when this first started, there was nine Tableau ambassadors from the forums. Since then, this has grown over to 118 members across 16 different countries. And the way that that worked was Tableau would nominate someone and there would be some recognition, much like the Zen Master program to some degree. Well, that's changed now. So if you know someone uh, or you feel that you are someone that exemplifies some of these uh, uh, passionate uh, capabilities and uh, things like that. Go out there, uh, nominate yourself, nominate someone else, nominate as many people as you want. You have up until uh, July 10th to do that. Tableau will go ahead and uh, let you know, probably by August, I think, uh, who those new Tableau ambassadors are. One of the ones I do want to stress here, though, is this data dev ambassadors. This is brand new. These individuals are from the developer program. Uh, if you're not familiar with the developer program, please check that out at developer.tableau.com. We're definitely going to talk a lot about that more, especially in the, the Phoenix space um, and what you can do on the development side of things. You do not have to be a coder to do some awesome things with development. All right. And uh, I kind of mentioned this before, but uh, the Phoenix Tableau user group has opened up our Slack channel. Uh, we now invite you, no matter where you are, to join, uh, collaborate with us. Uh, we've got different channels for different kinds of topics. So uh, please hit that bit.ly link. It is case sensitive, but uh, join up, uh, engage with us, uh, and we're here to help you uh, in an expanded community. Let's flip over to another one and the next one. And uh, we just like to include some additional resources. So again, if, if you've been impacted uh, by COVID at all, or you work in a, a setting where you want to view and explore the data within COVID, uh, there's a lot of great material out on the, the COVID data hub where you can uh, tap into COVID uh, source data and or download uh, starter workbooks that really showcase uh, a lot of great stuff. Uh, not that this is great, but uh, visually uh, get an idea of what's going on, how to reopen on the Salesforce side of things. There's the, the work.com, how to reopen safely. So please check that out on the uh, COVID Data Hub. Again, we've got all the virtual community events, including the user groups, which are now recorded, the DataFam Community Jam, e-learning for 90 days. Do not wait. Please sign up for that. And so much more. Uh, Tableau Public, if data could talk, and additional resources on the next slide uh, with all, I don't want to say all, but a good majority of the community activities, uh, one of the ones we're going to talk to today, with, which is uh, Project Health Viz. All right, so here's the, the rest of our lineup for 2020. We are all virtual for the rest of the year. So please sign up at usergroup.phoenixtug.com. We will be uh, pushing out our July meeting uh, early next week. Uh, that will be a team up with the Denver Tableau user group. So we're really excited about that. And then we've got the rest of the year, August through November. So sign up for updates. When those become available, you'll get notified and can't wait to see you. Yeah, and the dates, uh, thank you, Michael. The dates for the Tucson group are also shown here. Um, 
we're going to try and keep a, a regular monthly rhythm, rhythm through this, even though a lot of these meetings, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, are going to be virtual. Um, we will try and do some more collaborative tug events, whether it's with Phoenix or other user groups. Uh, it just seems to, to work well and be a great way to network and to gain some broader exposure within the, the larger Tableau community. So here are the dates. They're, I believe, the third Wednesday, third Wednesday of each month. Um, hope to, to see you at future events. Uh, just some ways that you can connect with us, uh, user group sites uh, for both Phoenix and Tucson. And with that, we've made it through the announcement portion. Thank you for bearing with us. And uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. So I'm going to do a brief introduction and kick it over to Gray to introduce himself. But uh, I met Gray about a year ago. We uh, just started uh, grab coffee, bounce around some ideas of incorporating uh, Tableau Public into the undergraduate business space. And he's really uh, taken that and, and ran with it. And they've done some really cool things at the U of A with uh, incorporating not just Tableau, but primarily Tableau, but technology in general into the undergraduate business curriculum. So I'm excited to hear Gray's presentation and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Gray to get it going. Cool. Thanks, Christian. Uh, let's see. I'll share my screen here and make sure we're on. Presentation on. Good to go. Uh, yeah. So um, first, thank you for the invite to, to, to talk here. Uh, I'm hoping this is a little bit more interactive. Uh, I spend my, my life sort of lecturing, uh, and I found that it's better when it's more of a communication rather than me talking and, and, and everyone listen. So I'll let one of you all monitor the chat while I kind of talk about what we're doing at Eller. Um, the big movement is to, to incorporate technology and Tableau has kind of been the perfect way to kind of jumpstart that movement in sort of when I first got here. So a little bit about me, I always have to plug. I am from the great state of Kentucky. Uh, we don't get nearly enough attention. Um, it's usually the negative attention, uh, but I've been out here at, in the Eller College for, I'm getting ready to start my fourth year. I, I'm kind of, so I have a, uh, I went to undergrad at a small liberal arts college in, in central Kentucky, and then I worked for a year, and then I got a PhD in economics. And then like, I've kind of become sort of a Swiss army knife. So I, I technically sit in the economics department, but uh, my primary role here is to teach uh, a, the large second sequence statistics class, um, which has actually been sort of a blessing in disguise. So it, I think it's helpful to talk about why we've been able to accomplish so much. Uh, one, it's a four credit hour class. So three of it, they spend with me um, in sort of a lecture teaching statistic concepts, a lot of practice. And then one hour is in a lab where it's specifically meant to learn technology applied with statistics. And so that's been sort of a, a big win for us. Um, unlike probably most people or, of the panelists here, I am very much a, a Tableau newbie. Um, and the more that I learn about Tableau, the further down to that spectrum I seem to fall. Um, I feel like I get to kind of an intermediate and I'm like, wow, I, I didn't even know you could do that. So I kind of drop my, um, my standing of my, myself even further, but it, it is really cool. So I met um, Christian, like he said, kind of a year ago. And when we sat down for coffee, I had never opened Tableau. So still very much a, a newbie. And the big part of where, um, why I, I learned Tableau in general is this new technology initiative. Um, and somehow I was named the, the head of technological innovation for the pre-business curriculum. Um, a little bit probably has become, I, I've been relatively successful here at the U of A. I've won a couple teaching awards, a couple different um, advisory awards. So I've been very blessed in that sense. So I'm hoping I can kind of talk about like what this is and how it is kind of spanned into everything. Um, that is now Tableau in Eller. Uh, so we were formed last summer um, with kind of three different goals. So goal number one is to figure out what our business students are using. Um, and then 
connect that to what we're either providing or not providing in the curriculum. And then, uh, as we kind of already knew from word of mouth rather than and anecdotally, um, try and incorporate more technology based upon what we find from those two sets of, of results. And so general um, about the team, there are six faculty staff members, uh, one representative from each department. So we have an MIS, uh, an economics, a marketing, uh, business management, accounting, a finance. And then we have three student undergraduate ambassadors that we got to recruit based upon their unique set of skills. And where our focus was initially, and I'll show you kind of the survey results that we got and how it kind of drove this. Um, I don't want to say is low level, but it's kind of low level when we think about it uh, in terms of, let me make sure. Okay, I'll let you on the chat. Um, what we're going to incorporate. So one is advanced Excel or even moderate Excel. Uh, then Tableau, the Adobe Creative Suite, and then we have a new wing called TechCore that focuses on emerging technology. Uh, and so that was, that's kind of our, our initial set and it stemmed out of here. So here are the results that we got at the very beginning of August of last year, where we asked everyone that had an internship that came back from Eller, they're like, what did you use? Um, and you can kind of see very heavily it's in Excel and uh, a little bit further down the line, um, and what kind of worries me is, I have Excel data visualization here, and the more I learn about Tableau, um, we have Tableau and Power BI, sort of its Microsoft counterpart down here, and I think that's awful, because Tableau is so much, in my opinion, and, and probably everyone in this group's more user-friendly. I've always sort of stuck away from using a whole lot of graphics in the lab for our class, because one, I worry about using graphs without some form of testing, but two, Excel just seems to make it unnecessarily difficult unless you know exactly what you need to do and exactly what you want to show, whereas Tableau is much nicer in that if I know exactly what I want to show, I can show it. Um, but if I have no idea what I want to show or if I'm looking for things I want to analyze, that's much, much harder in Excel than it is in Tableau. Um, and so that's been sort of a, a huge win. And so what we've done specifically with Tableau, I'll leave off the Excel and the, the Adobe stuff, but uh, the big wins for uh, what nine months. Um, there are now three Tableau public cases in my class in the lab component. And um, in general, this has already been probably the biggest win and, and much larger than we thought. So I'm going to exit out of this and uh, I'll share these. So if you want it, like, so big win number one is it forced me. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Are we good there? One of the panelists, let me know. Yep, you're good. Yep. Yeah. And so one, it forced me to learn it. So when I sat down with Christian um, and it really happened by ha happenstance, I was like, huh, I need to learn Tableau. And like two days earlier, someone had sent an email that said, hey, we have a former alum that wants to get involved and, and figure out Tableau. And I was like, well, that seems like a great resource. And that was Christian. And he graciously offered to kind of sit down and, and work with us. And so I started to learn it. Um, and then he also agreed. So one big part of our, our, our uh, initiative was to provide workshops for students that want to do it. And I didn't know any Tableau and very few people around me did. And so I was like, well, hey, Christian, like, do you want to do a workshop for us? And he graciously agreed. And we were super ambitious. I think we set three hours for our, our first workshop, which we, we modified. But um, he built and came in and, and presented. He also helped build the three cases uh, in the lab. And so when we first started using Tableau, and, and we're going to keep this up, we liked the idea of Tableau Public. Um, one, because it was free, and two, because they could display their work. And we liked free because we had a lot of faculty come in and say like, well, what if a firm doesn't have the resources like Tableau? We're like, well, everyone gets access to Tableau Public, so that excuse is no longer um, valid. And so we built up um, three cases, and then the best part is, is being able to share it and everyone sees it because the students feel like they're doing 
work and then it's kind of hidden. It's then up to them to go around a career fair and, and convince an employer like, hey, I'm proficient in Microsoft Excel. And we're like, well, this kind of solves that. And, and we've already seen this. So we've had a, about a thousand students go through the class already. And now every one of them has a Tableau public profile and three, hopefully if they did all the assignments, we incentivize them to do it with, with points and, and bonus. Um, but we're already hearing positive feedback. So, and these are all linked on there. So the first one I want to show is, so Kelly wasn't even in my class. She was in a different class, um, but came to us and was like, hey, I played around with Tableau. I love it. Uh, I want to learn more about it. And she did. Um, she put Tableau Public on her resume. She had it linked. And initially, like, so she reached out and now, so she works for Tableau this summer in an internship. Um, and that's, I mean, she learned it about, I would say six months ago. And you can kind of see some of the things like she was, we worked together when she was nervous about her interview of kind of the stuff to prep. Um, Katie was a former student. Uh, she went kind of above and beyond in terms of would like play around with things. So if we kind of look at her profile, I'll show you an example of like the first case is super easy. So it was meant to be two dashboards, but she was like, that's hideous. I, I want it to look better. So she came in and was like, all right, just basic bar graphs and then kind of talking about it in a story, which is really cool. And then we kind of let them, like we don't show them how to change the, the, mat, that, uh, the mat background, stuff like that. And a lot of it was just them that get to play with it. Um, these are different people that I, I'm now working with on my, my internships. Um, they've come from the class and they've kind of, you can see kind of their skills building. Uh, one that I want to focus on, so Spencer Sylvester, and there's another one I don't have her on here, nor um, Optiblin, I believe. They had it on their resume that said like, hey, I have experience with Tableau Public, and then during their internships with, so he works for MFUG, so that internship, and then Goldman Sachs, they say, hey, like, talk to me about your experience with Tableau. And they're like, well, I can just pull it up. Like, I can pull it up and show it to you. And so they pulled it up as on a virtual interview and they looked at it. And the next day for both of them, they had an offer from both. And were like, hey, like, that was super cool. We haven't seen anyone with that. And so it's been a lot of, of, of wins. And, and that's just two stories. I've heard three, four, five, six different ones that say like, hey, like, employers asked me about Tableau and my experience on my resume. And it was really cool to be able to talk about it that our kind of peers um, were not. And so that has kind of been the exciting and uh, portion of it. Um, we did complete, so Christian did the first workshop for us. Uh, we didn't want him to do them all because I mean, he was gracious enough to, to do that and talk about it. So we actually completed five of those, um, five of those workshops where students could come uh, for free and and just work through and, and a lot of it Christian built that foundation for us, which is really nice. Uh, we actually started filming them um, and put them on zoom because students students liked it, but they wanted to do it later play around with it again and, and come back to it. So we, we've recorded that and shared it. Um, and you can kind of see like if This was at what time was this Chris? It was like 730 at night 7 to 10. Uh, we have some just like we had a room full of like 25 students who had never seen Tableau. Um, that would come and just came and played around with it. And so they're excited, which is really um, nice, uh, exciting for me. Um, and then the last piece. Uh, so my goal this summer um, is because I am a Tableau newbie, I was like, hey, like, I'm going to actually sit down and, and take my skills to kind of the next level in Tableau. Uh, and then COVID happened. Uh, and uh, everything essentially went virtual or in our in our world um, ta Eller is is very notorious for for a lot of, of students landing internships between junior year and, and senior year and so we had I think it was something like 400 internships canceled um, Amazon Macy's were big ones and so our sort of tech wing called tech core which there's more information um, you can check out the link um, stepped up and they said you know what like we have jobs we can do let's build our own. And so we actually, they actually built up a, a, an internship program and I'm the head of the data science and visualization pillar is what we're calling it. And the huge, the biggest component of that is, so starting off with Excel, just understanding, getting comfortable with data. 
and then visualizing it using Tableau. Um, we're going to use desktop because we're, we're teaching students how to connect to our SQL server with it, which is really cool. Um, and utilizing it, we're on, we're just finishing week four, which is the last training week. And next week we start sort of, we have nine jobs lined up from local Tucson. Um, the university is a big one. Uh, the state of Arizona has a Valley fever one that they wanted us to kind of do. And we're all doing these jobs for free, but it's, it's a hundred, around a hundred students from the Eller college spanning everywhere from freshmen to second year, um, MIS graduate students who are kind of now going to be working on these jobs. And the big focus is, is using Tableau and mainly, um, through there. Um, and we've just started. So I wish, and I'm trying to work with Catherine Jennings. So she is the head of the Eller Tableau user group, um, which actually just did a, a, I think maybe the last Tucson user group had sort of a joint, um, that was the last time we were kind of in person, I bet, uh, meeting with them. So we started coordinating with them, which is more of a, they're more at the master's level. So I'm more of an undergraduate uh, focus in general on that. Make sure we're doing okay on time, yeah. Um, and then where we're headed, kind of the goal is, so on the second sequence stats, like we've had hugely positive feedback. The demand is there. The students want it. Um, Excel isn't super sexy unless you're sort of a, I love data. So I've always nerded out. I'm like, look at all this cool stuff you can do in Excel. And the students are like, yeah, it's not bad. Um, and so I'll get like maybe 10% of the class is like, this is really cool. I can see where I'm going to use this. Um, but as soon as we put Tableau in there, you can see on my evaluations and the lab evaluations, they're like, Tableau is awesome. I, I'm definitely going to use this in the future. I can see it as my, in my role as whether it's an accounting, marketing, MIS major. Um, I can see it. And this is exciting. And so if, if I can make data exciting to, to generally students that don't like data, especially statistics, it's a huge win. So now we're going to kind of go backward. Let's, let's introduce them to data even earlier rather than second semester sophomore. Let's get them uh, second semester or first semester sophomore. And then I can take Tableau to the next level um, in our course, which is kind of nice. Uh, we need to spread the word. The initiative is new. Um, and so a lot of it is getting it out to the upper level faculty in terms of, um, listen, I, I, so everyone in my class, they have to go through my class to get into Eller. And so faculty need to know, like, listen, every student has three like Tableau cases. You can start utilizing it in your course for other programs. And we have a little bit of it in one accounting class and one marketing class, but we want to expand that even further. And the big thing is, is what I'm working on with a lot of my students this summer as well is this online toolkit. So it's a place where these tutorials for Tableau and that I've kind of, we've already started building, students can go and, and either redo the workshop or um, learn a different skill and take it to different levels. And so this is to more allow students that are really curious right now to build those skills. And we have the, the links to the, the Tableau stuff that they have, um, trainings that they have, um, but it's also for faculty. Um, if we wanna get it more into the curriculum, we found that we have to lower the cost to faculty. Uh, it is kind of a high cost to spend two days teaching the fundamentals of Tableau or Excel or, or whatever program you want. But now it's, hey, like, don't spend any class time. We, we have this universal resource. It, they'll know how to do it if they watch this hour long video, which is kind of time stamped with topics. And then we can really like build sort of an Eller brand and that we have the communication. So if you aren't familiar with, with Eller and I wasn't when I got here, um, we're notorious for being great communicators. Uh, we have these really intense communication classes. And while that's really nice, um, I love it. I also want to make Eller a, a tech school or at least someone that like when they come into an internship, you know, the Eller people are going to be able to move around comfortable with data, visualize data rather than like, well, we got to spend this first two weeks teaching you the fundamentals. So that's kind of my, my big goal and where I want it to go. Um, and on that, I'll stop and take questions, anything like that. Yeah, so we do have one question in the chat so far. I just want to remind people to go ahead and put their questions in if they have them. Um, 
wondering about the resources at U of A in terms of an undergraduate degree in data science. So we know that there is a master's level degree and also a certificate. Do you know of any other resources along those lines? No, so good question, no. So currently there is no, um, there is no data analytics major in the Eller College. Um, I wish there was, uh, but it's, it currently sits in the math slash statistics. So we have it, it's just in a different college, which I would love to move it in here. But um, again, I'm still relatively new here. It takes a, a long time uh, to make any, I'll say large level changes. Uh, I've already started the arguing process, but uh, right now it kind of sits over in a different department. So a couple of the students that I, I've, our tech ambassadors are, double majors with data science and um, I think he's a marketing major as well. So long and I know this is, this is a little bit outside of your, um, your area, so I'm not sure if you would know the answer, but do you know anything about that available in the engineering? Looks like systems engineering was the specific question. Um, no. So I'll be honest, I, I live in uh, what we call Eller Island, uh, kind of focusing here um, in turn, we're trying to get our, our ship in order uh, before we expanding out to other ones. So I don't know engineering. I apologize. And then do you know if there are any extension courses in analytics? Um, not like titled analytics because we don't have that analytics major. It's more within your major you have to decide. So I know there is a marketing analytics class that heavily actually uses Tableau. Um, there's a, it's like a financial modeling class for the finance majors. Uh, but in general, you have to find them within your major. And I, I know of those two. And the goal with the toolkit is to hopefully allow the other majors to kind of get on board. Like, I know there's an accounting class that it's not an analytics class, but it, it does use Tableau to, to visualize um, various reports. But we also want to drag in like the business operations. Um, in my department is is probably last in line in terms of technology, which is sad, but um, drop that cost so that we can have more focus on, on analytics. Um, but right now there's not like one class, it's, it's spread throughout whatever major you're at here. Thank you. Um, any other questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A or chat, monitoring both. Don't see anything else right at the moment. Um, Beth, did that answer your question? Yes, awesome. Yeah, and so just like a last thing that I'll say, because I'm out of time, is if you are an educator trying to, to think about like incorporating Tableau into the class, like my biggest worry was I don't know Tableau. Um, and so it worried me that, hey, like a, a student would come and be like, hey, like I want to do this. And I wouldn't be able to do it. And that worried me. I'm always like, oh, I should be the, I should be the professional or whatever. Um, but to be honest, I took a leap. I was like, hey, like this is happening, whether I want it to or not, and we might as well start it. And so I just hit the ground. We started simple bar graphs and like scatter plots, maps, um, getting them a little bit interactive. And really it's just getting it going. You don't have to be a, a pro. And I'm still not a pro at all. Like, the internship that I'm working on now, like students will pop in, like, I want to do this. And I'm like, I don't know how, but let's see what the internet has. Or let's see what Tableau has. And so I don't think you need to be a master to at least get the curiosity going. And if an employer can look at a simple bar graph with some text on it that describes it and say, hey, you have a lot of, like, you have at least way more, you've opened it. Uh, you know what it is. Like, it's a lot of our students are like proficient in Excel when I first got here. And I asked them to sort data and they had no idea. I'm like, oh gosh, like you're not lying. Um, <laughs> so, but now it's like, yeah, Tableau Public, you can't lie. Like there's your, there's the work you've done. And it shows it's so easy and it's really sort of sparked interest and increased uh, student engagement with data, which I've always loved data. So my problem is how do I get other people to, to love it? And this is an easy way. And um, there are some, some hurdles to get through, but it's really nothing in nobody. Like we can all handle it. Uh, and I, if anyone wants to, to get the assignments from me or um, a video walkthrough of anything like that, like feel free to, to contact me and, and I'll issue. 
And a couple more resources were just shared um, in the chat that everyone should be able to see. Um, Andres jumped in. Was it Andres? Someone, sorry. Trying to see and my cat is actually <laughs> trying to see on my, on my keyboard. Um, Andre said that he actually taught a semester for the College of Engineering using Tableau and other BI products. So it sounds like um, that might be available. And also um, Tableau for teaching program. Uh, Michael just shared that resource as well. Cool. All right. So if you have any other uh, questions uh, for Gray, uh, please put them in the chat. QA will definitely circle back after everything. Uh, Gray, great presentation. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, absolutely uh, wonderful. Wonderful what you're doing over there. Yeah, thank you all for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. And, uh, I look forward to, to learning a lot more from the masters in, in this group. Absolutely. All right, so since we're uh, just running a few minutes behind, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, kick off Tableau Trivia now. Shouldn't take too long. After we do that, then we'll kind of cut to break for a little bit. But the way that this works is if you want, you can join on a mobile device or uh, you've got a link down at the bottom. So either a computer or a mobile device. Uh, go to menti.com. Uh, we've got a code out here, 228634. Or on your mobile device, you can scan the QR code. Got a lot of different ways that you can participate today. Uh, so we'll give you another 10, 15 seconds to copy this information down, uh, and then we're going to get started. So this is a great way for us to kind of engage with you, have a little bit of fun, uh, test your knowledge around Tableau, and, and so much more. Let's make this thing competitive. And there's a mix of questions from some Tableau novice type of uh, inquiries through stuff around the community, around advanced, uh, uh, some advanced topics maybe. All right, so let's uh, switch over to this. Actually, get back here. All right. Looks like we've got a few people. So once you uh, are logged in, uh, just go ahead and uh, tap one of those little emoticons, uh, little heart, thumbs up. If you're clicking that question mark, uh, it's more like a, hey, what's going on type of thing. Hopefully you'll figure this out quick. So we had, uh, I don't know, about 80 people on the, the call. So we'll just give this another 15 seconds or so, um, and then we're going to get started. Again, menti.com, use code 228634, and you can do that from your mobile device. Uh, Nicole, uh, I'm not going to be looking at the chat or Q&A or anything, so if you see I've got it, no problem. let me know. Thanks. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you haven't done that already, again, menti.com, 228634. 8634. Write that down, join us, and let's get started. So we're going to ask a few questions just to kind of get to know you, who you are, and then uh, once you get the hang of this, we're going to start into some trivia. All right, so we've got some Tucson people, Chandler. Anyone outside of Arizona? Phoenix, Sierra Vista, India, all right, Delhi, Flagstaff, good deal. All right, so got a good mix of people. Is this your first time with us? Uh, and this could be whether it's in Tucson, Phoenix, or combined. So we got quite a few people. It's their first time attending, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. We know that there's probably a billion other user groups going on right now that you could be attending, virtual events, so we appreciate you spending time with us. 
All right. So we can plan for a future. We'd love to know what kind of virtual meeting topics interest you uh, around Tableau. Demos, customer stories, hands-on activities, workshops, tips and tricks, data dev stuff, APIs, all the above. Tips and tricks leading the way. All right, we'll give another few seconds for this and then we'll move on. All right, thanks for participating there. Now, which Tableau products interest you? Uh, and there's a wide variety and this list is gonna grow uh, even more, especially with the, the Salesforce uh, partnership. All right, a lot of, a lot of people with Tableau desktop, a lot of people with Tableau server and online. Love seeing that. All right, good deal. How long have you been using Tableau? So if you just started recently, uh, less than a year, one to two years, three years or more. All right, looks like we've got a lot of data rock stars. Good deal. Okay, anyone on the uh, meeting today have any Tableau certifications? And currently there's uh, five out there, three in the desktop uh, realm, uh, two in the server. So if you don't have any uh, today, again, as a reminder, Tableau e-learning program, uh, free for 90 days, please sign up with that. Also the certification program, that 50% off deal uh, is good for the Tableau desktop specialist exam only, but that will expire on June 30th. Please make sure you sign up for that. Uh, it's $50, uh, normally it would be 100. Once you sign up, you will have six months to actually schedule your exam. So you've got enough time to participate like we had in that, we have a Slack group uh, in Phoenix that we're gonna go through and do some certification prep. Uh, we've got the Tableau e-learning, which is gonna help ramp up. So all of those people that do not have certification, let's get that Tableau desktop specialist bumped up. All right, we're gonna do some Tableau trivia. Are you guys ready? These questions are gonna be scored based on uh, your ability to answer them as quickly as possible. So go through them, read them carefully, may sound a little tricky, uh, and points will be awarded uh, or the more points will be awarded the faster that you can answer the question correctly. All right, so we got people signed up in there and give it another five seconds and we're gonna start. We do have a quick question. Uh, when you say the free 90 day training expires on June 30th, that means that you still get 90 days if you sign up before June 30th, is that correct? Absolutely, sign up before June 30th. If you sign up today, you will have 90 days from that sign up date. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get started. All right, Tableau is offering how many days of free e-learning? 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days? Again, you answer the fastest, more points will be awarded to you. All right, 90 days. Yeah, we went over that a couple times. Um, so please sign up, uh, get on that. The clock starts ticking the moment you click that sign up button. This will expire on June 30th. All right, next question. Which of the following file types contains only uh, packaged data? And this might be a little uh, poorly worded, so apologize. All 
All right. Maybe we'll go over this or revamp this question in the future, but TDSX. So it, TDSX is a Tableau data source that really contains uh, your package data. It does not contain any of the, the workbook information. And I'm, Hyper could possibly be that as well. So again, apologies for the poorly worded question. Next one. Which of the following is not a Tableau field data type? All right, great job, everyone. Next question, which version of Tableau is free for everyone to use? Fantastic. Tableau Public, it is available free for everyone to use. Tableau Desktop uh, does have a cost. You can apply for a free license, but it is not free by default. Tableau Express uh, doesn't exist, and Tableau Web Authoring is part of Tableau Server, Tableau Online Platform. So great job. What is Tableau's methodology for building the capabilities you need to create a successful data-driven organization? And if you're not familiar with these, uh, once you see the right answer, please go out on Google, uh, type that in and leverage this platform, this methodology. Tableau Blueprint, um, check it out. Uh, if you're building out something just like uh, Gray was talking about, Tableau Blueprint will help you really evangelize data governance, community, training, sponsorship, and so much more. All right, next question. What process component is not part of Tableau Blueprint? Again, if you're not familiar with uh, part of the process or Tableau Blueprint in general, give it your best guess here. All right, many of you got that right. Iterate is not one of them. It would be Evolve. Very similar though. All right, next question. What social data initiative is community focused on visualizing health and healthcare data? Don't get this one wrong. <laughs> Do not get this wrong. <laughs> All right. Project Health is we're going to be talking about that today. Next question. This social data initiative is a community dedicated to helping you learn and improve your analysis and visualization skills. Great you talked about this. Fantastic, Makeover Monday. All right, next question. What feature in Tableau Desktop records helps you identify information about key performance events as you interact with a workbook? Looks like I might have forgot a transition in there. What helps you record and helps you identify key performance events? Performance recording, absolutely. If you're not familiar with performance recording, uh, please do check that out. Always make sure that you're leveraging that every time you use uh, or build something in Tableau Desktop. All right, so we're halfway through and here's our leaderboard at this time. Good deal. 
So let's wrap this up and see who our winner is going to be. Next question. You want to visualize public data from a table located on your company's website. What is the easiest way to get that data and visualize that in Tableau? What is the easiest way to do it? Copy and paste. If you didn't know that capability existed in Tableau, uh, check it out. Copy data from uh, any website, Excel, go into Tableau, paste away, and you're going to be thrilled. Next question, which branch is not part of the Tableau Ambassador program? Talked about that earlier today. Ambassador program has six branches as of last week. Please go out and nominate your Tableau ambassadors. Absolutely, designers is not one of them. Data dev is the new Tableau ambassador branch. Next question, which Tableau command line interface allows users to automate publishing workbooks and data sources? We'd kind of throw this under maybe the developer program. If you're not familiar with the data uh, developer program, you go to developer.tableau.com. You don't have to be a coder to leverage this. Uh, it can save you a lot of time, features and functionality. Learn more about developer program. Tab command is the tool that you would use. All right. Next question. Which Tableau data dev platform would you use to embed Viz's into web apps and create custom interactions? Really out of the box stuff out of Tableau. Again, if you're not familiar with these things, check out developer.tableau.com. You can get a big education on what these tools are and how you can leverage them. Absolutely, JavaScript API can definitely help you do that. All right, next question. How would you explore and test drive upcoming unreleased Tableau features? All right, absolutely. The pre-release program, developer program is a separate program. If you didn't know about the pre-release program, it is open to everyone. You can uh, test drive new products, features and capabilities before they come out. A lot of great stuff that's in the pre-release program for 2020.3 right now. This Tableau exam is for those who have foundational skills and understanding of Tableau desktop. Absolutely, Tableau desktop special exam is that very first exam which tests you on the foundational skills and understanding of Tableau desktop. You are not required to build out visual or analysis uh, in a way that you're gonna get graded on. So usually Tableau recommends about three months of Tableau uh, use uh, training. Again, get on that e-learning program, go through that, sign up for that special exam, 50% off, expires June 30th. You'll have six months to take that. All right. How many Tableau Ambassador branches are now available? Most important one, user group and Tableau public. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Six, data dev, forum, social, um, public, and data dev, and I think I missed one. 
forums. Absolutely. Next question. Last question. Since 1958, which school leads in the duel in the desert rivalry? So I didn't get a chance to talk to Gray, but I am an ASU alum, so. It doesn't really matter what the record books say on this one. The answer cannot be the Scum Devils, right, Michael? <laughs> it's absolutely the Sun Devils since 1958. So I had to, had to work that in. If we went back to the history of when the school was actually a normal school, uh, U of A would, would actually be on top. But I had to get a win today. Statistics. <laughs> Skewed statistics, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so who's uh, who is our winner today? All right, Sheena, congratulations. Yeah. Nice work. What does Sheena win, Mike? A round of applause from all of us. Great job. All right, good deal. Uh, thank you. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Uh, it's a great way to kind of let us know where you're at, what kind of uh, things you might be looking for. So uh, good deal. Uh, we're going to take uh, just a, maybe a, a couple minute break. Uh, please return as quickly as you can. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get started with uh, Lindsay's presentation. Should we do 11.15 AM MST, Michael? That, that gives about five, six minutes. Yeah, let me uh, update that here real quick. There we go. Let's do Grab that. a cup of coffee, glass of water, and get back in a few minutes. You got it. Cool.
All right, so it is 11.15, so that means we're going to kick things off again and round out our, uh, our time together. And I'm excited for this presentation. Uh, Lindsay Betzendahl is, is uh, video, videoing in from Pennsylvania, uh, three-hour time difference. Thank you for doing that, Lindsay. Um, she got a great presentation on risks and rewards of public visualization um, with Project Health Biz. So uh, there's also, as mentioned before, an opportunity to submit a link and um, have her provide some real-time feedback. Not to put her on the spot or anything, but um, no all problem. part of being a Zen master, I suppose. <laughs> so uh, yeah, with, without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lindsay and let her, her roll with it. Sure. All right, hopefully that worked. Awesome. Cool. So thanks for having me, uh, Christian, Michael, um, all the way from Pennsylvania. It's true across across the across the way here. So um, so I'm going to talk a bit about Project Health is and um, kind of go through some about what Project Health is about, why I think it's really important to get involved in community projects. Uh, and how to use those to your advantage in your career and your uh, building your technical skills. Um, so, get there. Let's see if I can make this advance. There we go. Okay. So, a little bit about myself. Um, as Christian mentioned, Lindsay Bettendahl, I'm a consultant at a small um, healthcare visualization company called Health Data Viz, uh, aptly named. Uh, I've been working there for uh, about a year and a half now. Uh, I'm a Tableau Public Zen Master and Public Ambassador. I've been using Tableau since 2014, which I literally had to like do the math on my fingers to figure out that it's been seven years, which um, I'm still baffled by. Uh, time goes really fast and do things that you enjoy. Uh, I love healthcare. I'm a healthcare data addict. I've been in the field for 11 years. I actually was a behavioral health clinician working with kids and their families, doing you know, general psychotherapy um, for a number of years, and then kind of stumbled my way, so to speak, into the data visualization space, and uh, I would never look back. Um, I'm currently an adjunct professor at Temple. I teach a data viz course there that uh, Josh Tapley had started as an uh, in-person class, if folks know who he is. He's also um, a fantastic Tableau user and user group leader. Um, and so I teach the online version of that course. Um, obviously, since I'm here and love Tableau, I'm very passionate for teaching others, learning, uh, and working on developing community throughout the data biz space. Uh, Project Health Biz is um, my little baby that I started back in 2018, May of 2018. So we're going on the past two years. Uh, and I also have a blog where I write um, some tips, tricks, and other general data viz uh, stuff. I enjoy a good beer and a hike. I like snowboarding, I like being outside. Um, this whole quarantine stuff has been a little difficult, but luckily found some nice places to hike around me. Um, just love being outside. Nature is my happy place. And it wouldn't be a healthcare presentation without full disclosure of my own nutty being. So. <laughs> While not formally diagnosed, let's be honest, I'm totally ADHD. Something shiny? Oh no, okay, I'm just kidding. Um, so a little OCD at the same time, and trichotillomania means I pick my hair, so I do this a lot, and that's full disclosure. But that means totally a lot of fun as well, and so I think it's just the right recipe for those who know me. Um, I can be pretty energetic. So hopefully I am for this presentation, because we're in the last hour, and we all want to stay engaged. Okay, so we all heard a little bit about the number of community projects out there. And I use that to say uh, projects that someone runs and provides data available in usually a clean fashion for other people to visualize. Often these projects provide either support or just a community that you can share your visualization with others and learn, I think, significantly along the way. And I see these projects as, uh, you know, two different buckets not probably entirely or exclusively, but um, you're either doing them to improve. So you're in the earlier phases of your Tableau work or your data visualization um, uh, trajectory, and you use them to kind of force yourself to visualize something regularly. 
Um, I know when I started using Tableau, I didn't know where to find data. So it took me a while to find something and then visualize it. Um, you know, so I think this, these opportunities gave me and many others um, just an easy access to information to continue to practice. Similar like if you practicing for a marathon, you go out and you run, you have a plan, you know, you're doing these things every day, every week. I think to learn your skills, it's really helpful to have sort of a plan and practice regularly. So they provide data and I think that makes it really easy to just jump in. You don't have to do a lot of data cleanup. You're provided the data and you're up and running. I think also in the, in the column of using these projects to improve your skills, you uh, can test your opportunity to use data sets that you're not familiar with. So uh, maybe you work in finance and you're going to visualize healthcare data. I mean, that's something you've never done before. But those are really great opportunities because in the real world, we're often faced with data that we're not familiar with, or is quite likely. Another thing is you can explore and research. So it teaches you, or it's taught me, how to use information and then seek out other supplemental data or uh, just research to help build my visualization and make sure that I'm doing my best to make it accurate and insightful and engaging. And then the last couple is to keep practicing foundational techniques. When you start out on, in this field or with Tableau, um, you know, you need to do some of the basics first. And a lot of these projects help you just get that foundation, practice how to build good visits, and get the feedback that you need about what works, what doesn't work, and what you can do better. And I think that's invaluable. And the last thing is to see what other people do with the data. So I started participating in Makeover Monday in 2018. And one of the hugest benefits for me was to see a ton of other visual visualizations of the same data. And it gave me a lot of ideas and just sparked my interest of I hadn't thought of that, or that's a different technique, or I really like that, or I don't like that. And it helped me shape my ideas about how to create visualizations and create my own uh, kind of concept about design and what I think is a good viz. The second bucket is when maybe you're a little further along in, um, in the field or like me, I'm always learning, but I've been doing it now for a number of years. So I tend to fall on the little in the experiment and stretch bucket. So I use these projects now to always try out new approaches or techniques that perhaps I wouldn't have used at work or didn't think I could. Um, sometimes I test different things out that then I do use at work, but I try to see if they um, will be functional or uh, user-friendly by testing them out in community projects. And also to utilize more creative and design-based approaches. So this is a really great place to kind of stretch the limits of what you can do in Tableau. Um, we've seen plenty of design-based visits recently. I think people are using some other softwares like uh, Figma and Adobe Illustrator XD to add all kinds of elements to the visualizations, which I think is great to help, you know, boost your creativity. Uh, and then also just challenging yourself to explore other techniques that you wouldn't have done, or maybe you're in a routine at work and you do some of the same calculations. This is a way to try different things you hadn't done before. Um, I particularly always challenge myself to learn one new skill each viz or something I haven't done before, um, because then I have now an entire repertoire of workbooks that I can go back to and say, how did I do that that one time? Uh, I think I can use this again. And lastly, obviously finding your style and approach. Okay. So what makes, in my opinion, what makes healthcare so interesting? So obviously we're talking about project health is, um, I think healthcare is exceptionally interesting and I think you should too. And so aside from the fact that I've worked in it for years as a behavioral clinician, and then I was a director of analytics and innovation um, for a number of years at a company. I'm fascinated by it because it's about people. And it's about you and I, it's about disparities, cost, prevalence of diseases, access to care, uh, all kinds of things that many of us or we all are probably familiar with in some way. And we all can relate to health and healthcare data. I mean, have you heard about the recent pandemic? Like, there's so many things that in our world end up becoming healthcare data. Have you been to the doctor? Have you paid a medical bill? Um, do you know someone who has a disease? Do you have a child who has special needs? So all of these things either make it very relatable for you or for people you know. And I think that makes this kind of data, um, people get very passionate about the information, or I certainly do, because I can relate to it, or make it, it feels impactful for the world. 
Um, so then, so this is why I think um, healthcare data can be interesting. However, I also want to share a little bit about the mission and why I think it's also very important. So the mission of the Project Health is, is to tell the stories of our health. And that's to tell both individual and global stories and particularly bring about awareness. It's kind of about reinventing healthcare. So when I started with Makeover Monday, uh, as I mentioned, um, I really noticed after, at the end of the year that there was very few healthcare related data sets. There was a lot on sports or finance or technology, um, some of the big categories, which was ironic because healthcare is a huge, um, you know, uh, cost in the world and it's a you know a big actual um event that we you know we all go through at some point but there was a lack of this data and some of that is because the data isn't always readily available but i didn't want that to stop us so stop me and so by bringing about awareness for healthcare stories through data um we can help reduce stigma and improve awareness of so many different topics um you know that impact us every day um and so So the providing awareness and bringing the data to the community can be very um, powerful. So first of all, human attention spans less than a goldfish. And I say that because every time we consume news media or things we see on social sites, we read them quickly and we forget about them, unfortunately. And so in order to drive awareness for some important topics, I think that clear, compelling, and easy to understand visuals are so necessary. Certainly things like infographics, um, but other types of data visualizations where we're bringing this data to more people. Um, and so that's what this is really about at the core. And I think the Tableau community is just a fantastic place for that. Between uh, sharing and being involved in these initiatives, we get out these messages um, and stories to so many more people. And Tableau even more recently has um, been showing a lot of the visit of the days related to Black Lives Matter, disparities, all kinds of important social um, uh, topics that are occurring in our world today. And that's bringing about awareness. The more we're seeing it, the more people are engaging with the data, understanding things they didn't know before. Um, so this is a really important, I think, project. I'm biased, but um, this is really the goal of it. So quickly, I'll share how to be involved if you're interested. Um, what, why, when, how. So first of all, let's make sure we're clear, healthcare is not boring. I try to put some uh, really great data sets together that I think are interesting. It's a monthly data visualization project, so it's only 12 a year, it's not like a ton. Um, so if you wanted to do a couple, there's only 12. Um, I do curate the data sets, um, do any cleaning if necessary, and put them up on my data.world site. Uh, which you can just search for my name up there. I think it's actually like Zendal27, but anyway, I can get the links to those. Um, it's all about creating a community and providing feedback when, when possible or when needed or desired. And I try to do some monthly blog recaps of all the submissions. A little behind this COVID-19 current situation with my kids home. Uh, I haven't been able to blog in the last like four months, which is like unheard of, but I will get back to it, I promise. Um, but some examples have been prostate cancer rates, Teladoc stock prices, adolescent pregnancy rates, human development index, uh, sub, sub Saharan health facility locations, um, and obviously, more, most recently, was um, a social index, social disparities, and things of that nature. Um, so you get the data, you do your visualization, very similar to many other projects, and you share it in the platform that you feel comfortable with. Uh, whether it be just on Tableau Public, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, what have you. And I'm always willing to help provide feedback and help people improve upon their visits if I can. There is a tracker, which while many of these have uh, data visualization projects have trackers, I really see this also as a resource. So by being able to uh, see what other visualizations have been done, find the links and look at that uh, data, I think it's also important. So I hope people submit them so that there is this resource for healthcare um, visualizations that have been published on Temple Public. So here's a couple of examples of how I don't think healthcare is boring by any means. And obviously, as I mentioned, 
I use this as an <clears throat> opportunity to test out new things. So there's a handful of ones that I have done. Um, the Human Development Index one has, you know, a couple different chart types that I thought was interesting, some show hide containers. And the first time I tried a gradient background, right? Like I just tried different things. The Vitruvian Man, I created this tab polygon chart, which I've done a presentation on how to do it. And there's a blog on it if you're interested. Um, so I always try to do something new and make them kind of engaging, creative, and uh, tell a story. So I do research on a lot of these to make sure I'm bringing more context. Uh, I also talk with experts if I need to, but um, the prostate cancer one, I did talk to someone whose husband had had that and helped me really kind of understand some of the meaning behind this data and being thoughtful about my approach. And here's a couple other examples. Um, again, all different ways of trying to show this information in meaningful and uh, engaging ways. And ultimately practice makes perfect, right? So, you know, we, those, many of us want to have, um, you know, a good resume, a good portfolio. And one of the ways to do that is to obviously practice and share these things. Um, so community projects, I'm a testament to it. It's exceptionally helpful in improving uh, my skills. I believe it would improve anyone else's skills. The opportunity to gain feedback from people in many of these is exceptionally helpful. Um, and like I said, testing your skills with new and perhaps unfamiliar data sets. Uh, and I also believe learning to uh, organize and design in a meaningful way is really important for healthcare. Over the course of the two years, we've had a couple of visit the days. Um, so these are a handful of the ones. I am Christians is actually the no world tobacco one, right? And uh, I think he had, he had two. There's another one here too. So. Shout out to Christian. Um, but these are all pretty fantastic visits that happened. And here's a couple more from recently as well. So in the end, I want to say, you know, it's really great to be both unique or not. Um, I think the community projects help you test your skills and go against the grain. Like I said, maybe you go with the grain, do what others do, learn about, you know, replicate. Um, maybe you just are the grain and being very zen about it. Uh, but it doesn't matter as long as you are learning and your trajectory is uh, along the path that you desire. So I want to share a little bit about the most recent viz I did, um, the social capital for which is June's Project Health Viz Data. And uh, I want to kind of go, I'm going to go through kind of my goals and approaches and then I'm going to actually do a quick demo in the background just to show some of the techniques that I use in hopes that might be uh, beneficial for folks. And I actually ended up doing two visits um, because I really got into the weeds of the data and I wanted to try a bunch of things. So that's okay too. Um, so here's what the goals were that I had. So this data had information about race in the United States as well as a number of other characteristics such as percent poverty, percent of low birth uh, weight, a percent of, um, uh, I don't think homelessness is in there like the mean age, the average temperature, like a whole bunch of interesting things that uh, you could kind of explore. So what I was initially curious about was related to the race data. Um, you know, I know a lot having worked in population health about the kind of the population of the United States and, you know, X percent of the population and the whole state, the whole United States is white, Hispanic, black, Asian, et cetera. But what was interesting is I hadn't really looked at or wasn't really aware of where were there more homogeneous communities on for any race and where were there highly diverse communities. So I wanted to look at that. I also really wanted to use a different map projection than the one that Tableau uses. And this posed a couple of other uh, interesting problems, which I'll share in a minute. Um, and I wanted to use this parameter action concept where someone would swipe across the screen and the population would reveal itself. I kind of wanted this brush approach, which um, I'll show you as well. Uh, and I really wanted this to be impactful. I thought this visual aspect of brushing across a map and having the population of a particular race reveal itself was kind of interesting and uh, I thought it'd be engaging. I always like using show hide containers. So I wanted to do that. I like to do that with my annotations. I think sometimes text can be a little heavy on the screen and by being able to toggle it on and off, I think um, can help your visual just 
stand by itself. And then I also wanted to explore using a bivariate map, bivariate choroplast map to be exact. Now I've actually never done one before and more just I didn't have the data to do, to do it. And so this was a good opportunity to do it. And as I mentioned, I always try to do something new in every viz. And so that uh, was definitely something new that I hadn't done before. So the approach I took is I started with a view of the where people live and what percent of people from different racial ethnic groups live in each county. Um, and then I looked at where there were some minority majorities, meaning across all the different races, which one had the most. Now, it didn't mean it was 50% or more, it just meant who had the, uh, which one had the most percent, the highest percent. Um, and then I was also curious about what counties didn't have any group over 50%, meaning everything um, was lower than that. And I was kind of defining that as diverse. No one was really kind of out in the lead necessarily. Uh, and then I wanted to explore how race impacted one of the measures. So there were so many and I could have gone on looking at everything, but I picked one I picked poverty because I think poverty is a proxy for many other social issues, um, including, you know, uh, crime, access to healthcare, uh, you know, early death, substance use and mental health, all kinds of things. So that's, um, those are the decisions that I made for this. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is this lat long uh, parameter thing that I did for the map. Now, let's see if I can, I'm not gonna be able, ooh, I can. Okay, that sort of worked. Uh, can you see the Tableau screen now? Did that work? You can. Yeah, yep. cool. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. Okay, for those who haven't seen, I just want to show this before I. Um, so, oh, I already did it. So, this is the parameter action that um, I have going on, and it gets really kind of slow, probably being on the internet too. Um, but you'll see as I move across my mouse, the colors show up. And so this is what I kind of wanted to do that someone could slide across and perhaps make some guesses and then see what happens. I don't know. Um, again, probably not necessarily useful in a business case, but this is what I use these projects for at this point is to try new things. Um, I also wanted to put in a toggle to turn that off so that people can actually stop and explore the data in different parts of the United States. So there's actually two maps layered here. Um, if I move it, you know, probably, I don't know, hang on. It's right there. So that was just how I faked that. Okay, so let me show about how we went about this. Okay. So as I mentioned, I was using a different map projection which ha happens to be a shape file. And so the way the shape file works is that the map ends up being laid upon a Tableau's base map layer with latitude and longitude that have nothing to do with the United States. So I think it ends up being over Africa or something probably. So I couldn't use the lat and long fields that were generated by the shape file or that were in Tableau. So what I did is I was able to get another uh, file with actual lat longs for every county. Uh, and thanks to someone in the community who was able to quickly get me that. Uh, and I pulled that in. And that is what I ended up using for my parameters. I needed the real um, lat long so that I could, you know, um, assign them to each county or assign something to each county to make this go across. So what I did is I um, duplicated that field. I removed the geographic role and then I created a parameter from it, basically just wanting it to be a number that I could range across this way, across the United States. And so here's the example of the slider I just said set from field from my longitude field. And then I created a calculation that essentially says if I'm at the lowest one, I want um, to show the racial percentage. And otherwise, I want it to be negative one. And I just did that because of the color, I want it to be white ahead of it and the color, uh, this color gradient that I had used otherwise. And then, then in the other end at Alaska, I had to do another little thing just to make sure when I got to Alaska, I could still get it to turn a color. Um, and that's all that was. So that was my color 
um, calculation. And then lastly, you add a parameter, and that's adding that to the Tableau um, dashboard and having the action of hovering over the map change the slider value um, based on that longitude. So if I go back to this and we go to the map, Let's see if I can make this bigger. There we go. So, um, so I have this color change on here and you'll see essentially I created a duplicate. I had the, the magma color palette in my Tableau um, preferences file, but it doesn't have white in it. And I needed to make sure that there was an end that was white. So I duplicated it and add white at, you know, FFFF or whatever it is. Uh, to the end, and that was able to give me my white when it was um, at the negative one, so that everything else is the values of the racial ethnic group would be available. And those obviously values were never negative one, so uh, that's how I got around um, that issue. So then when I swipe across, that color changes on the map here. So the dashboard action, and we have my parameter. And this is what I was showing earlier. You just have when the hover on the map and the target is a slider value, which is that parameter, I mean, that uh, longitude um, parameter, it's going to change the longitude um, field that I have. So that was, that was the one thing that I did on this. And so the second talking about the chlor, uh, chloroplast map, I want to just mention. So I had a couple of people ask me about the bivariate chloroplast map and then how, to, you know, going about this color part of it. So if you're not familiar with them, essentially it's taking uh, two, two variables. So a regular chloroplast map shows only one value for each polygon or location, right? So similar here, you have food insecurity and there's one value for each county and obesity has one value for each county. So a bivariate has a color encoding for every polygon across those two. So if you imagine, you know, you have this range and these ones, and you're crossing them and getting this intersection at um, different points. So low, 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 medium, low, high, and then other direction for the other variable. So they end up looking like this, where you'll see, oops, sorry. Uh, down here is an example, um, and this was from Tableau's website. What it gives you the opportunity to see is both where there is high obesity but low food insecurity, high obesity and high food insecurity, right? Uh, uh, high food insecurity but low obesity. And so all these different subsets, in particular those four corners are, are quite interesting to see how, how they differ. So I just said, you know, the relationship between these two variables, and this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, it does require these nine discrete categories. Um, so we have to have a calculation. In my case, I did a calculation for race and then a calculation for poverty. Um, and essentially then you, oops, sorry. Oh, for heaven's sake. There you go. Uh, then you join them together into a calculation that essentially is a string that gives, gives you its um, your category, your discrete category, or dimension rather. Um, and the way I did this, there's a couple ways, perhaps uh, in retrospect, I probably could have done this a little differently. Um, I actually looked at a uh, box and whisker plot of distribution of the racial percentages as well as the poverty. And I actually picked the lower hinge and upper hinge, which is the 25th percentile down as low, the 25th to 75th, which is the middle 50% as middle, and then the 75th uh, to 100 as um, high. So I didn't actually break it down into uh, even chunks, which I probably should have done like 33%, but um, that is how I did it this way. There was no real easy way to do it in Tableau to get these calculations. Um, yeah, no easy way. I'm sure there was a harder way. <laughs> this was the simple. Um, Okay, so let me go to that now to show real quick. So what you'll see here is for, let's see. 
Uh, here we go. Right, so I'm just making these calculations, um, one for the black pop population, one for the poverty, and then I join them together to do just a string. And then you put them together, let's see here. No, oh, no. Um, what is this one? Well, I've never found me. How was that one? Yeah. Oh no, it's right here. Yeah. So these together give me my uh, nine categories, which are over here. And so you just color them accordingly. And there's a lot of uh, resources out there for good color palettes for a bivariate chloroplast map. Um, I tend to think that you want to have something that shows these um, both the, the high high, the low high, the low low have to kind of pop out a little bit. If you have a gradation across uh, from a low to a high one color, you kind of miss out on uh, this low high example, these high lows where there, you can kind of eat more easily find these sections um, in the map. And so the last thing that I did was the show hide annotations. I use this a lot, uh, I have a blog on how I've done this in the past as well. In this particular example, I used PowerPoint, I think for this one, but I've also used Figma and Adobe XD to make the image. Um, and you use a show hide container. So you create an image um, with a show hide, floating show hide container. And then you create these custom images for the icon um, if you want. And I will do this one real quick. So here's my little icon, and you'll see when I select it, this, um, the annotations pop up for the entire visualization. Now this is basically, this is, not basically, it is, uh, just an image. So it is an image, it's nothing more than, than that. And the way to do this, um, in this case is, I took a picture of my dashboard and I put it into PowerPoint. Um, and then, and like I said, maybe I did it in Figma to be honest, now that I think about it. Um, and then you create all these uh, annotations around that image and then delete the image. So you make a box, a blank shape box uh, so that you have the right space, but delete the image and then you're just shape saving um, this entire area as an image, which then you can float above. Um, or in this case, I floated it below so that this all still uh, works. So I like to do that a lot. Like I said, I think um, it just keeps it clean, but provides that context. Uh, so I tend to use that in my visualization. All right, just did the demo. I decided to do it at the same time. So <laughs> we're good there. Okay. So I'm happy to answer any questions about that, uh, you know, later at the end. Uh, I do want to do, um, at the end of that part, I want to get into kind of the viz review in our last, like, you know, 10 minutes or what have you. So um, I know there was one that came in. I don't know if there was any others. And then I have some uh, other ones that uh, Christian and I can chat about if we want as well. So let me see if I can. Oops. I would say maybe Lindsay, we, we start with the one that came in at the beginning yep. of the meeting in the chat and then go on to the others. Cool. I brought it up. So um, hopefully you can still see my screen over here. Yep. So John Wake um, sent this one in. Um, and so this is on the black home ownership rate. Uh, and so I was looking at this during the other talk a little bit to kind of think of some things. So, Here's what I'll say about this. I have some ideas. A um, couple things. One, I like that, so this visualization is looking at every um, state in the United States, how their, the black ownership rate has changed over time. And then you can ultimately make some comparisons across different states. 
one of the challenges I find with having providing people the opportunity to select everything is that they might do it. And ultimately, I would say you don't want someone to do this. So what I like to do in visuals uh, of this nature is provide some sort of limit to that. And there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, I really like Lindsay Poulter's um, set action use where you kind of, I use it a lot actually, where you have them click a button and that particular value gets passed into the graph and they pick another one and that value gets, and they have three sets that can be in the visualization or you know, something like that. So that you kind of limit them or your viewer to only make a comparison across a handful of states. Um, the other thing that I was uh, thinking about with this is that this trending over time, uh, John actually has it down here as well, where we can see that trend, but hovering over state. So it kind of made me think when I'm looking at, if I were to look at every single state in the United States of how this has changed, what I'm really interested in, and again, this is just one opinion, what I'm really interested in is who's going up and who's going down, because all the little details are really hard for me to process, like, you know, all the ups and downs. So what I would think would be really cool is kind of to have a slope chart or just we look at whatever early, either the earliest or this, uh, wherever the Fair Housing Act came in, something to say, like, more um, directly be able to see these ones have gone up, which one has gone up the most, which ones are going down, because, you know, when I click on this, that's ultimately what I wanted to see is like, okay, South Dakota, it's all down here, like, in a slope chart, like that would be very obvious. Um, whereas it'd be also very obvious which ones have not made any progress over the decades. So that was just something I was thinking about. Uh, I don't know, Christian, if, if you want to say anything either about yeah, I, I think this is, this is, I haven't brought it up, I'm just looking at it now, but I, I agree with what you added, Lindsay, in terms of the, the busyness of all the colors once all of the states are selected. I think it's, this is a challenge that we struggle with at work as well, is what is the main purpose of the dashboard? Is it meant right. to be analytical tool or is it meant to be uh, sort of a story based tool where you're trying to communicate with a visual a main point and I, I mean we have the reference line with the 1968 Fair Housing Act if mm -hmm. if the main point is to compare um, performance before and after and how that housing act impacted home ownership rates then I could see some some bands some big ass numbers at the top um, comparing Definitely those two segments adding a lot of value to the story. Because right now right. it's sort of a, an analytical tool where somebody can go in and, and maybe dig around for a while and uncover a story. But I think what ultimately you'd want to do is make it easier for the consumer to, to have a big idea to sort of take away um, yep. from the visual. And there's various ways you can do that, but that's just my- Yeah, my those are good points. Yeah, the only other thing I would suggest is um, I find having things over time on a map difficult because when I select one, I can't remember the colors of a prior one. So there's definitely no comparisons. So unless I need to get exact values from a different date and look from a map, ultimately a table would probably get me what I need. So it makes it a little difficult to figure out how can I use the over time or the years and gain some insight. Um, I think a, a, another way that one could do this for John uh, is the small multiples, maybe in this area, yeah. maybe using like a hex bin map to include thinking, yeah. uh, Alaska and Hawaii, you know, over mm -hmm. all those years. Yeah, definitely. I was definitely thinking of the hex map too, just so that you could kind of get those all together and see where things pop out a little more in terms of the colors. Um, but yeah, and you know, I, I tend to like, I think vision tool tips that can be really powerful to add that actual context. So, you know, if I wanna look at Wyoming right now being really dark and I can see, oh, well, something happened in the last year, like they weren't, they must not have been um, that high, you know, a year before. I think that's very helpful. The challenge I had with it is it's the same data that's on top. So this is where I'm think, trying to think through, um, kind of condensing that story and like, what do you want the, the viewer to see immediately? And then what are the things that are extra context um, that are maybe different than, you know, so if you had the slope chart or something, then this over time detail would be helpful. Uh, right now it's, it's kind of, I think it's the same. But yeah. The other, the other thing I might add just by looking at it a little bit more, what I try and do with, this, with the line charts or 
um, spark lines or the multiple line charts is just remove the grid lines just to simplify. Um, tends to make it a little less less busy. And in addition, the map, if we're just looking at US data here, just just remove Mexico and Canada from the background and just focus yeah, just make it white. on the US. So just a few just real real small things just to, to simplify a little bit. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, John. Yeah, thanks, John. All right, let's see if I can. Okay, so there's a couple, these are all Project Health Biz ones um, from recently. Now this one is from uh, Lokesh, and I wanted to show this too, because um, I actually haven't like really dug into how all this is done, but this is why I love these projects, is then you can download and figure it out. But so this is on Teladoc Health. And so what I really love about this is, um, aside from it's certainly built as like a mobile um, app, mobile device, um, the user interface is pretty cool. Uh, I really like, you know, how these little selections I can see um, change um, over here. I don't know why the color's not changing, but, um, and then these little tabs to change the graph three year, one year. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'll also say um, cool tips are for me one of my like biggest loves. Like I love making really nice tool tips and I get really frustrated when people forget to <laughs> change them or remove them. So it's nice to see uh, all these details um, that are nicely organized and um, you know formatted well. And Lokesh also has these little um, buttons down here. So here, actually, I guess this is the start. This is the main information about Teladoc, the chart, and then uh, a table. And this table has some really neat, you click the filter below, and you click here, um, and it adds, actually, and really, it's really cool how it adds uh, whatever you select here, and then you know now it's in this table. So I think it's it's a really cool visual to um, make selections and then find them down here and then being able to remove them. And the last thing I'll say about this aside from kind of some of the clever aspects is uh, I think you did a good job of using kind of really like two, three colors. It's very minimalistic in that sense. And I think it's important to use color with extreme intention and remove it whenever possible. And so a lot of this is that have just two colors, I think, um, for me, I find them very pleasing to look at, so. Any comments, Christian? I think there's been a lot of um, writing and discussion in the Tableau community over the recent months about how dashboard developers can learn from web uh, developers yeah. in terms of UI mm -hmm. and UX. And I think you look at Lokesh's viz and see sort of the rounded objects the, um, the new morphism with some of the iconography yep. and some of the real subtle UI features. And it, it totally looks like a web uh, app. And yeah. I think it's really, really cool. So I think you did a great job and it's, it's really pleasing yeah. to and, and to use. Definitely. And I would caution that the new morphism thing can be uh, overused easily. So I think it's great in subtlety. And so this is really subtle. It's just in these, this area. I've seen some that, you know, it's like all over the place. And for me, at least, it gets a little overwhelming. Um, so just a point of caution, I think. Definitely something to explore and try and then see how it works. So this one is by Kausif. Um, and this one was on... Uh, Sanitation in Africa. Come on. Let's try that again. Well, I can always. There we go. Okay. 
So a couple of things about this one. So um, this is definitely a little more long form viz, which we see quite often. Um, but what's interesting about it is it's actually just a, a few visualizations and quite simple ones at that. Um, we have, you know, two maps, some, you know, band text information, and then these um, sort of stack bars, or I guess you might call them this um, negative space bar, I suppose. Um, and what I really like about this is it's very, it's easily consumable. I, I like the big title. It really helps me understand what we're looking at. There's a subtext. Uh, I like how we've broken that, the, the initial title information up with this dark background and has the, um, the African uh, country above that with some annotations here to speak about, um, you know, just a call out to the, the highest rural population in this, in this particular one. Didn't forget his legend, that's always good too. Sometimes I see people remove them, but they're kind of needed. Um, I love sections. So I use fine lines very often in my visualizations and just using containers and then a blank shape and setting it to like 11 pixels with the four on either side gets me, you know, my three pixels or whatever. Um, and so I do that all the time. I, I think it's really great to separate. Um, so kind of give your reader some context to these things go together. These things are different, right? Um, I find these negative space bars I've seen a lot as well. Um, they do take up more space. So I wouldn't use them if you have like one um, graph because then you probably just want to show all of it even if it doesn't, you don't have to have a percent scale go to 100. But in this case where there's a collection of them, it's kind of small multiples of all these different bars, it helps keep all the axes the same, but provide that kind of gap. So it gives you this visual perception of how far from 100 are we, right? Like they're pretty far because now I can see this whole space um, versus just the value. So I think um, kind of maybe unknowingly, it gives us a little more perspective of how big that difference is. What about you, Christian? Yeah, I think. Uh, you alluded to it earlier, Lindsay, but one of the benefits of engaging in these projects, Tableau, uh, in Tableau Public, whether it's Health Viz or Makeover Monday, is just using yep. it as a forum to experiment. And so here we have sort of a long form story based dashboard that you probably don't get to do regularly at work. Oh. And so I love the scrolling, the storytelling. And uh, one thing that I would in this section right here so Western Africa jumps out. So you have you have some pretty uh, significant percentages in Northern Africa, Southern yeah. Africa. Not that they're great, but then you go down to Western Africa. And if there was a way to sort of enclose that or shape that mm. to draw, draw immediate attention to that portion of the continent that is still really far behind would be. A That's good a really good idea. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, one of my favorite, you know, Gestalt principles, or like to use those concepts, like the enclosure really draws attention. So that's a great idea to just bring some attention, even some extra text about like what happened there um, or why or what's being done would give that like social aspect of how to help improve. That's a good suggestion. So I know it's three o'clock to um, your time. You want me to do one more? We'll do you want to do yours? Yeah, so this is one that I created and I'll just say um, it's a uh, it's really one of my favorite visits that I've created in public and uh, you talk about the purposes of engaging in the Tableau public space so all of these components on this dashboard are really things that I've learned just by engaging in the community so you have this the sunburst chart that was based off of a tutorial from a guy named Bora Biren who I don't know is um, that heavily involved in the community anymore, but so taking the opportunity to learn yeah. that type, type and, and implementing this viz, you scroll down, you have sort of the, the curvy lines that's based off of a, a tone, a uh, Tableau Magic tutorial. And then just the layout of the viz was based off of a guy named Samo Draw, where you have the, the shading uh, and sort of the, the coloring. And so you have all of these sort of design inspiration ideas coming together. Um, they're all from different places, but yet the story is my own. So it's, it's a story based off of my own health experiences going back 15, 20 years. And 
um, Tablet Public is a great medium to, to tell those things and to communicate them and, and to get it out there, all in a, a really um, playful and artistic format. So, um, so yeah, that's just what I would say about, about this one. Yeah, this is one of my favorites as well. I think the colors you chose were just fantastic. And, you know, you know typically, obviously, you know, Sunburst chart, they have, a, it's a hard time to think of a really good use case for it, but this like really works. Like I found myself very interested in exploring how these different layers and, you know, getting to them the specific detail about how you're categorizing all these aspects that went into like the celiac um, disease um, discussion. So yeah, it was really well done. The flow is great. And, and I, I like how you talk about the different inspirations because that's one of the biggest benefits is um, getting all this inspiration and then kind of creating your own, your own story, but also learning your own style as you learn from others and, um, I think it's a great example of, of that. And, and cool. the other thing is, you know, the, the text and the title layout. I'm a big fan of when we have some really clear titles. It was very cleverly, creatively designed with kind of that spacing and uh, the typography. So little details can have a, a big impact as well um, with all these little. So it was really cool, those. And so with that, I will close and you know ironically i was um going to show one of samuel's visits for those who don't know him he has some really great stuff as well as ann cattrall who had uh, a nice viz that had some cool chart types that i, I really enjoy using um, so this is lastly to say about project health is some of the impact uh, because it's that personal healthcare experience i think people have found that this is you know there's a lot to connect to um, Riddhi, Ki, uh, Riddhi, uh, her brother had had autism, so this was impactful for her. We have Rodrigo, who we did uh, one month, was on data from his daughter's healthcare visit, and so he shared his visualization. Um, Emily also shared the celiac one that, um, you know, she has, she's gluten-free. Uh, Luigi with autism, I know his daughter is on the spectrum, but he was able to share his uh, experience with that. And obviously, as Christian said, um, he also shared his um, visualization that had a personal story. And, and you know, lastly, a quote from Christian that I really appreciate is the stories you tell best are the ones you've experienced the deepest. Um, and so I think that is where you get your inspiration is to visualize things that you've experienced, that you're passionate about, that you care about, and you'll often create the best visualizations um, from that. So. Enjoy the journey. Community projects help you grow, connect, make meaningful contributions to the world. So just enjoy it, whatever it is to you. And thanks so much for having me, having me here. No, this is great. Thanks, uh, Lindsay and uh, Gray and Christian and everyone else. Uh, fantastic. Um, just as a reminder, please make sure you uh, go out to usergroups.tableau.com, sign up for updates, whether it's Tucson, Phoenix, or any other industry-specific group. Uh, we're all virtual now for the most part, so we would love to have you. Uh, any final words, uh, Christian, or any of our panelists? No, I just thank both of you for, for presenting today. I know we're all busy, got a lot of stuff to do, and uh, both of them were excellent presentations. Thank you guys both, appreciate it. Good time. Absolutely. Good seeing you guys. All right, thanks uh, for all our participants, uh, attendees for joining. Uh, we'll see you in July. Uh, again, thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Gray. We'll all talk right, to you soon. Thanks. Bear down, Michael. Bear down. <laughs>